so much stuff to do around here. A new bike shop. All you have to do is walk down here. It's... I'm pretty sure it's down here. When you use an item on your Pokemon, it gets happier. Treat your Pokemon nicely, they'll love you in return. Now this is where you can check your Pokemon's happiness. Happiness is one of those stats that... Well, you generally get... Make your Pokemon more happy by walking around with them, using items on them, leveling them up, giving them experience and fights. I think even using them in certain fights, specific fights in the game, important battles, will also give you more happiness. You can't sell any bicycles. Sure, I'll ride your bicycle to advertise it for you. And in exchange for exchanging our phone numbers, he'll give us the bicycle. Now this is a very helpful item that will allow you to move around much faster than normal. Which is why I'm going to be registering it to my Y button up there. And just like the... I forget which bike it was in the... Or which gear in the... Shoot. The fourth generation games that you had to accelerate in order to move. I think it was the higher gear. You could exchange gears. You could do a lower gear, which was slower, but it accelerated really quickly. This one takes forever to accelerate, but it's the bicycle, and now we can move around a lot faster. Up here in this tent is the Name Raider, where we can change the nicknames of our Pokémon if we so desire. I don't really intend to use him, because I have most of the nicknames I have in mind. So, I'm probably not going to bother, but if you want to change the nicknames of your Pokémon, you can. Just keep in mind that you can't change the nicknames of Pokémon that you did not catch yourself. If you received it in a trade, you can't change its name. Meryl! Where the heck is Lyra? Why are you running away from Lyra? Little scamp. A dress-up shop. Put on accessories and dress up and take pictures? That sounds something girly. Why would I want to do that? But if we come down here, Lyra will give us the fashion case, which we can use to dress up our Pokémon. And now occasionally when we talk to the Pokémon as it's following around, it may or may not be carrying something for the fashion case. Other than that, I don't think it has really any purpose. I suppose it had a bigger purpose in the Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum games where you could do the beauty stuff. I never really liked it, I did it just to see what it was. But down here, Pokemon Battles! The first interesting segment of this video! Hooray! There are a couple of guys down here. They're pretty strong, actually. Also, I realized that Slowpoke is stronger on the defensive side than the special defense side. I don't, don't really know why I thought the opposite. But nobody we haven't seen before. Yawn! We'll put your Pokémon to sleep at the end of the turn after the one it was used on. So if I leave Sleepy in for the next turn, he's gonna fall asleep, even if I knock Slowpoke out. Now the really annoying thing these guys like to do is use Yawn on consecutive turns so you're constantly switching out. And I remember to turn battle animations on again and you're knocking down my attack. I'm just gonna wait until you do Yawn again. So then I have an excuse to switch out. Or you can just stay in and let me knock you out. I think I can knock you out on the next one. I'm thinking of taking the Shell Bell off Duster because it's a really long animation at the end of the turn. I've also given HCB a couple more levels than I expected to, so I don't want to have him level much higher than the rest of my team just because it would be a little bit imbalanced after we finish the gym. So I'm going to try to use these other guys as much as possible, at least for the time being. And we should be able to knock him out on the next turn. So exciting! One Slowpoke takes two minutes to knock out! After I spend 20 minutes wandering around Goldenrod City doing things that nobody's actually interested in watching. Go me! And another Slowpoke. Yay, Slowpoke. Mm -hmm. 
I really want Duster to get that extra experience, though. I will say, when I was doing a little bit of level grinding between... It wasn't the last episode, it was the two episodes before that. Duster was actually prompted to evolve twice, once at level 15 and again at level 16. But I wanted to make sure that I saved his evolution for when I was actually recording, so you guys got to see it. Now, if you're curious how to stop an evolution, don't be, because it's generally not a very good idea to do anyway. But if you see a Pokémon evolving, you can press the B button during the evolution, and it will stop. One reason you might want to do that is in case you want a Pokémon to get a certain move sooner than it would otherwise. Because not fully evolved Pokémon tend to learn moves faster than ones that are more evolved. And with that... Duster is finally going to be evolving! Meaning he's going to be even more powerful than he was before! Be afraid. Be very afraid. Duster evolved into Ferret! And he's prompted to move Helping Hand again, despite the fact he was prompted to learn it at level 16 as Centret. I'll just show it off here. Helping Hand boosts the power of an ally's attack in double battle, does absolutely nothing in a single battle. So it's really only helpful if you're using it as a supporter. That's why I don't like to have it. Ferret! He's just as adorable as he was before. Let's head over here. Dress up your Pokémon here. Hang up a picture in the other room. That sounds awesome! No, you don't need to explain it to me. I know how to play dress up. Let's see. Well, Furret's the star of the show. Let's use him. And we can make our Pokémon look really pretty! Not gonna spend too much time on this. Okay, you can you can stop explaining stuff. But you can drag stuff onto the screen and make your Pokémon look even more pretty than it already is. And I'll put a flower on his head because he's so cute! And he's even holding a flower, too. But this is where you can pick up stuff for your fashion case. It'll be stuck in here. And I guess that's everything. You can also change the background. I don't remember if you can actually pick up backgrounds or not. Can I move around for it too? I can move for it too. This is awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to waste too much time here. Yep, all dressed up. Needs to have a title. Uh, let's just... Let's just call it by its name. Is Furret in here? Furret is totally in here. Let's just call it Furret. So let's head in here and look at the picture. Is the picture over there? Yep, there it is. He's so cute. No, I'd rather not waste money on accessories. And we can save a bunch of other photos in here as well if we so choose. No one wants to see me do that! Memorial Photo Studio? Team Rocket Uniform? That sounds awesome! I'm gonna look totally badass in that Team Rocket Uniform! Yeah. And you see, Furt blocked out Geodude entirely. Hilarious. You know what, let's see if we can give somebody else some screen time. Who hasn't had screen time in a while? Let's give it to Lupus. That's the only reason I got this far. Taking advantage of type advantages. Super nerds! It's about time we started running into these guys. Magnemite, the first one we've seen. The electric steel type. Now, steel wasn't added as a type until the second generation. So in the first generation, Magnet Magnemite was only electric. But in this game, he got an upgrade! He's also steel type now! Bite. Very nice dark type move for Lupus to have, especially since he's a dark type, and I believe this is the first dark type you move you'd get via level up. However, it's physically oriented, and Lupus is a special attacker. Besides the fact that Dark Pulse is doing more damage by base power anyway. 
So I'm going to give up on Bite since I already have a much better Dark type move, but if you don't have that, Bite is probably your best bet at this point. And another Magmite. Did I ever show off Fire Fang? I don't think I did. It looks really awesome, but I think at this point it's doing just about as much as Ember. Maybe a little bit more because it's stronger base power. And Lupus isn't necessarily as powerful on the special side as I'm making him out to be yet. He will be eventually, but he's not quite yet. And Fire Fang also has the chance of missing. I think it's only 5% of the time that it misses. And it can also flinch the target if you attack before it attacks you. But generally, I like sticking with Ember because it's 100% accurate. You'll find as the game goes on, I'm not really a fan of moves that miss more than 10% of the time. Because you can't rely on them, however strong they are. And I prefer being sure that I'm going to hit the thing. And he's got a little robot Pikachu holding a Pokeball. How cute. Switch over to Crunch. I'm trying to get everybody some screen time in this episode since it's long enough as it is. Now down here you'll find two guys on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. You'll find the older haircut brother who will groom your Pokemon for a ton of money. I'm going to hold off on this until we actually have somebody that happiness will be useful for. But that's what you come down here for. You make it more Pokemon more happy. Now on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, the younger haircut brother will be here. He's cheaper and generally doesn't give you as much happiness as the older haircut brother does. Neither of them are here on Mondays. And down here, sometimes you'll find the herbal medicine old lady. She sells some really awesome healing items here. But when you use them on your Pokémon, they actually lower your Pokémon's happiness. Now, the most important ones here are the Energy Root and the Revival Herb, which is a max revive that you can buy. I don't like using these because my Pokémon don't like eating them. But if you don't give a damn about your Pokémon's happiness, these are probably the best healing items you can buy. Or among them, at least. I don't think a haircut affects how strong your Pokémon is. Lickitung! Normal type! Really cool! I never actually used one. I, I don't know why that... I mean, it's... It only has one stage, and that's Lickitung. But in the set fourth generation, it... The fourth generation did something really neat in that a lot of the Pokémon from the first generation that didn't have any evolutions we're given evolutions, and Lickitung was one of those Pokémon. I'll talk about the other ones when we encounter them, but for the most part, a lot of the Pokémon in the first generation that didn't have evolutions were given them in the fourth, which is an interesting concept. Just like in the second generation, a lot of the Pokémon... Well, a lot of Pokémon had that even if they had an evolution, some of them were given baby forms that you can only get by breeding in the daycare center. Wow, that was a lot of experience. Look at it go! Crunch finally hit level 18. You know what happens when Totodile hits level 18? Second evolution of the video! Crunch evolved into Croconaw! If you chose either of the other starters, they would have evolved earlier. But you can see his stats have increased as well. So who do I want in front? I haven't been walking around with Sleepy in a very long time, have I? Let's do that. How are you feeling, Sleepy? It's so adorable, even its cry sounds like it's sleepy. No entry beyond this Aww. I wanna go there, though. One more battle down here. You kept winning at the new coin game and they thought you were cheating. Well, I certainly hope they don't think I'm cheating when I kick their asses. 
I mean, beat the game really easily, yes. Grimer, pure poison type. Have we run into one of these yet? It's a really interesting Pokemon. Just looking at it, I mean, it's a blob of poisonous goop with a mouth and eyes. And it knows Mud Slap, ground type move, which is super effective, and it lowers your accuracy. But it's extremely weak, so I'm not really afraid of it. I'm told a lot of the solo-type po poison types, like Grimer and Coughing, are really good. I've just never been a fan of poison as a type, so I haven't bothered using them. Uh, who do we want to fight this guy? Send out Lupus. I apologize that this has been a really, really boring video, because there's a lot of stuff for you to do in Goldenrod City, and I wanted to try to show off as much of it as possible so we could just head straight to the gym in the next video. Which is exactly what we're going to do once we get out of here. Boy, has it been a while since we've actually done something that wasn't mull around in the city and do nothing. Well, I took care of him for you. It's all safe to go down now. How are you feeling, Sleepy? Still feeling great! And with that, I think it's about time for us to actually get down to business next time. So before we head to the gym, I'll do a bonus episode showing off the Voltorb Flip game you can play here. And if you guys aren't interested in that, I'll see you in the next episode when we head off to take on Whitney and the Goldenrod City Gym. This is Universal Giant, and I'll see you guys next time.